Donald Trump says he's safe and well after reports of gunshots described to have been fired in his vicinity. Local officials in Palm Beach in Florida say it happened in the grounds of his golf course while he was playing. During a quiet afternoon at Donald Trump's Florida golf course, gunfire suddenly broke out, putting Trump's safety at risk. Two people shot at each other near where Trump was about to golf. Quickly, the Secret Service and local police caught one person and found a gun like an AK-47. How safe can we feel when even a former president is in danger near his own property? What unfolded on a calm afternoon at Donald Trump's golf course is just the tip of the iceberg. And it's hardly the most startling revelation you'll encounter today. Sophie M., an international news editor, explained that Donald Trump had been preparing to play a round of golf with some friends when the gunfire erupted. The Secret Service, trained to handle situations like this, responded immediately. They detained one of the individuals involved in the shooting and, to everyone's shock, discovered a firearm resembling an AK-47 near the scene. It's worth noting that this type of weapon is not commonly seen in the United States, which only only adds to the mystery surrounding the event. Authorities are still working hard to confirm the exact type of weapon involved. Stay tuned as we delve into the origins of this mysterious weapon and uncover who really might be behind this unsettling incident. Now, in the bushes where this guy was is an 8K-47 style rifle with a scope. This incident has sparked a lot of concern, especially regarding potential threats to Donald Trump. It's not an isolated event, either. In fact, it comes on the heels of another recent attempt on Trump's life, raising even more questions about his safety. Sophie pointed out that global political tensions, as well as strong ideological divides within the U.S., may be playing a role in the increase in violent threats. It seems some people are choosing violence over democratic processes like elections, which is a worrying trend. Trend. Sophie also mentioned that President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are fully aware of the situation. In response, Vice President Harris made a public statement condemning the violence. She was firm in her stance, stating that there is absolutely no place for such actions in the United States. Her words reflect the growing concern about the political climate in the country, especially as we head toward the upcoming elections. As investigations continue, both the Secret Service and the FBI are expected to release more information. Right now, they're reviewing security footage from the golf course, which is equipped with a large number of cameras. They're not just looking at the footage from the day of the incident, but are also going back through the recordings from previous days. Their goal is to determine if there were any signs of suspicious activity leading up to the shooting. The subject had an active online presence, and we are going through what he posted and any searches he conducted online. It's possible that this event was planned in advance, and the investigators are leaving no stone unturned. What makes this even more significant is the timing. This incident took place just weeks before the U.S. elections, further highlighting the intense political divide that exists in the country right now. It's no secret that the United States has been struggling with polarization, and this event has only underscored the depth of that division. In addition, the ease of access to firearms in the U.S. is another critical issue. We need to do something about guns in this country, especially when I heard that it was a, an assault rifle. Um, that is going to make assassination attempts very easy. Many are wondering how such a weapon, resembling an AK-47, could be found near a former president's golf course. This availability of firearms is not just a policy debate. It's something that could potentially influence voter sentiment as they have to the poll. The current political climate is incredibly tense. People are not only divided on political issues, but the rise in violence is causing many to feel unsafe. This incident at the golf course is a stark reminder of the security challenges that America faces during this election season. It's not just about candidates and policies anymore. It's also about ensuring that the democratic process itself remains secure and that leaders, past and present, are safe from harm. Sophie 
GM also noted that similar incidents have occurred in the past, though perhaps not as high profile as this one. The increase in politically motivated violence is something that experts have been warning about for some time. According to Sophie, there is a pattern emerging. Whether it's because of heightened political rhetoric or deep-seated frustrations, more and more individuals seem to be turning to violence as a means of expressing their views. This is deeply troubling, as it signals a shift away from peaceful, democratic methods like voting and debate. As the investigation unfolds, the authorities are looking into whether this incident is linked to any broader threat. With the upcoming elections, the stakes are incredibly high. The Secret Service and other law enforcement agencies are on high alert, particularly when it comes to protecting high-profile figures like Trump. Any potential threat is being taken very seriously, and this latest incident has only ramped up security efforts across the board. As the investigation continues, there are still many unanswered questions. For one, authorities are still trying to piece together exactly what led to the gunfire exchange. Was this a random act of violence, or was it part of a larger, more coordinated effort? Was Trump the intended target, or was it just a coincidence that the shooting happened near his golf course? These are the questions investigators are working hard to answer. In the meantime, both the public and political figures are anxiously awaiting more information. This incident, along with others, paints a troubling picture of the state of politics in the U.S. The deep divisions, the rise in violent rhetoric and the easy access to firearms are all factors that contribute to a sense of instability. It is much higher because of them. They allowed criminals, many, many millions of criminals, they allowed terrorists. As Americans prepare to cast their votes in the upcoming election, these security challenges are front and center. Voters are not just thinking about policy issues. They're also thinking about the safety and security of the country as a whole. And it's not just Trump who is in the spotlight. The safety of all political figures is now a top priority for law enforcement. Whether it's the current president, vice president, or other high-ranking officials, ensuring their protection is crucial, especially during such a politically charged time. The Secret Service is ramping up their efforts, but the challenges they face are immense. While Trump was unharmed, the incident serves as a stark reminder of the security risks that come with being a high-profile figure in today's political climate. As the investigation continues, both the public and political leaders are watching closely. The upcoming elections are likely to be influenced by these events, as voters consider not just policy issues, but also the safety and security of the country. This incident, like others before it, highlights the urgent need for addressing the growing divide in the U.S. and ensuring that the democratic process remains peaceful and secure. In Springfield, there have been reports that some outsiders were seen consuming local pets and animals, causing a lot of worry among the people living there. This situation was brought up during a debate where Donald Trump argued that these actions reflect poorly on the country and are signs of bigger problems. He tied this point back to his famous campaign slogan, Make America Great Again, and used it as a way to criticize his political opponent. Trump suggested that their policies might lead the country down a bad path, comparing it to a worsening version of Venezuela's troubles. However, this claim turned out to be a major moment in the debate, where some believe Trump may have lost ground. There's no real evidence to support the idea that migrants are harming local pets, and many people see this as a way to make certain groups look bad for political reasons. Despite how strongly these statements were made, they were quickly called out as being false during the debate. The debate also pointed out how Trump's rallies often go off topic, with him talking about all sorts of unrelated issues, including things like environmental technologies that don't really exist, or stories that seem exaggerated. People who have attended these rallies have noticed that they can be very long and often drag on. In fact, some attendees have been known to leave early because the rallies can feel tiring or uninteresting after a while. One of the big problems with these rallies, according to observers, is that they don't really focus on what everyday people are actually concerned about. Instead of addressing real issues that voters care about, the speeches tend to wander into all sorts of different subjects that aren't directly related to what's happening in the country or in people's lives. For example, instead of talking about policies or plans 
plans for the future, a lot of time is spent on stories or accusations that aren't backed up by fact. Another issue that came up during the debate is how Trump tends to use fear-based tactics in his speeches. This is something that some people find troubling, as it can make certain groups feel unfairly targeted or blamed for problems that they aren't actually causing. When leaders focus on creating fear or division, it can make it harder for communities to come together and find real solutions to the challenges they face. During the debate, Trump's opponent pointed this out, trying to steer the conversation back to the issues that really matter, like health care, the economy, and education. These are the things that most people care about, but it can sometimes be hard to focus on them when debates and rallies are filled with distracting claims or exaggerated stories. Many believe that what people need right now is a clear plan for the future, not more division or fear. The debate wrapped up with a mix of reactions from viewers. Some felt that Trump's bold claims helped him stand out, while others believed that his focus on negative and unproven accusations hurt his chances of gaining more support. What's clear is that both candidates have very different ideas about how to move the country forward, and it's up to the voters to decide which vision they believe in more. Outside the debate, there has been a growing conversation about how political leaders use their platform. In a time when people are dealing with so many challenges, whether it's economic difficulties, health care concerns, or even global issues like climate change, voters are looking for leaders who will listen to their needs and offer real solutions. Many feel that the focus on exaggerated claims or divisive language is a distraction from the real problems that need attention. What voters seem to want is someone who will address their concerns directly and offer a clear path forward. The debate, while full of heated moments, didn't always manage to stay focused on these issues. Instead, it often veered into topics that didn't really address the everyday worries of people in the country. This has left many wondering what the future holds as the election draws closer and what kind of leadership will truly make a difference in their lives. But it's important to remember that this is just one moment in a much larger political journey. While debates and rallies can be dramatic, they are only part of the picture. As voters, it's crucial to look beyond the noise and really think about what kind of policies and plans will make life better for everyone. Whether it's healthcare, education, or jobs, these are the issues that will have the biggest impact on daily life, and they deserve our full attention. The next few weeks are sure to bring more debates, more rallies, and more campaign speeches. And with every new statement, claim, or promise, it's disgraceful. And that's the problem we have. We have a fake media, and so we have to fight harder, and we have to be stronger, and we have to be much smarter. Voters will have to think carefully about what kind of future they want. The election isn't just about choosing a leader for the next few years. It's about deciding what kind of country we want to be. As we move closer to Election Day, the political landscape will continue to shift. New issues will come up and new challenges will need to be addressed. But no matter what happens in the coming days, one thing remains clear. Voters will play a crucial role in shaping the future of the country. It's up to them to decide which leaders will guide us through the tough times and help build a better tomorrow. What matters most is that we choose leaders who are willing to listen, understand, and work for the good of all people, not just a select few. The debates, rallies, and speeches are just part of the process, but they shouldn't overshadow the real issues that affect our everyday lives. Let's hope that the conversations in the coming weeks will bring more focus to what really matters and help us move toward a brighter, more united future. In the recent debate, Vice President Kamala Harris made a clear point. She promised to be the kind of leader who truly listens to what people need and prioritizes them. She asked the audience to imagine what it would be like to have a president who puts their concerns first. But things quickly shifted when President Donald Trump responded. He didn't focus on the policies she was talking about. Instead, he bragged about the large, enthusiastic crowds at his rallies, saying that unlike Harris, he doesn't need to pay people to show up. He described his events as historic, claiming that people come to his rallies because they want to take back their country. But this wasn't the only point Trump tried to make. 
The debate took an interesting turn when Harris brought up the topic of crowd sizes, and Trump seemed to get defensive right away. Just by mentioning the size of his crowds, Harris managed to push him into a corner, showing a side of him that many people might find concerning. He reacted quickly and emotionally, which many saw as a major weakness. His responses became exaggerated, and he lost his calm, making him appear like someone who could be easily provoked, even by political opponents or worse, global enemies. The debate also touched on serious issues like abortion. Trump made claims about late-term and post-birth abortions. Abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's execution, no longer abortion. Which the moderators quickly debunked. His statements were inaccurate, and they pointed out his habit of spreading false information. In contrast, Harris focused on the real challenges that women face when it comes to reproduction productive rights. She pledged to protect Roe v. Wade and make sure women's choices are respected, clearly outlining her position on this critical issue. The conversation didn't stop there. Trump's remarks on racial identity were also called into question during the debate. When Harris directly challenged him on the topic, it became clear that Trump wasn't as comfortable talking about it as he had been in the past when she wasn't present. This showed a gap between the bold, sometimes harsh statements he makes in public and the way he handled handled himself when directly confronted. It painted a picture of inconsistency that didn't go unnoticed by the audience. Climate change was another key issue that came up during the debate. Harris pointed out that Trump has consistently denied the seriousness of climate change. Well, the former president had said that climate change is a hoax. And what we know is that it is very real. She aligned herself with the concerns of young voters, many of whom are deeply worried about the environment and the future of the planet. Harris made it clear that she is committed to tackling these environmental challenges head on. In response, Trump avoided the issue and instead attacked Harris personally, which likely didn't sit well with voters who are more interested in hearing real solutions to real problems. As the debate continued, it became clear that Harris had a strong ability to stay calm and collected while also clearly explaining her policies. Trump, on the other hand, seemed to struggle with staying focused on the issues, and his credibility took a hit. His lack of preparation and discipline may have turned off undecided voters who are looking for a steady, thoughtful leader who can handle the country's critical challenges. But here's where things get even more interesting. Throughout the debate, Trump kept circling back to his favorite talking points, crowd size personal attacks and exaggerated claims while avoiding some of the more pressing topics. This pattern of behavior wasn't new, but in the debate setting, it stood out more than ever. Voters watching at home likely noticed the contrast between Harris's calm, focused approach and Trump's more chaotic, reactive style. At one point in the debate, Harris took a moment to speak directly to women across the country, promising to fight for their rights and protect the progress that has been made. This personal connection with voters helped to reinforce her message and show that she understands what's at stake for many Americans. Trump, meanwhile, kept returning to his rally-style rhetoric, which may have played well to his base, but didn't do much to convince those who are still undecided. She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs, and all the things we talked about. Trump's overall behavior during the debate raised questions about his ability to handle the complexities of being president. His defensive reactions, combined with his inability to stay on message, made it clear that he may not be prepared to deal with the critical issues facing the nation. This could potentially hurt his chances of winning over voters who are still on the fence. As the debate wrapped up, the difference between the two candidates was clear. Harris stayed composed and focused on real issues like health care, reproductive rights, and climate change. While Trump seemed more interested in personal attacks and crowd sizes, this contrast likely left many voters thinking about who is really prepared to lead the country through its current challenges. How deep does the threat go? If a former president can be targeted so close to home, what does this mean for the security of ordinary citizens? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more investigative updates as we approach the elections.